today i'm going to talk about small small parenting tips for all the parents whose kids have been diagnosed with autism as we all know various challenges are faced by the parents of the kids with autism this may be because of their behavioral issues their sensory issues their gut issues sleeping pattern issues school adjustment speech language communication issues social interaction issues every parent wants to give the best good and healthy life to their kids and for that they tries to look for the opportunities and various kind of treatment to tackle with their signs and symptoms of autism so friends what i feel here is why don't we start this from our home itself if we follow certain small small strategies as a parenting tip at home then it will help our kid and give the enhancement in the improvement of your child as a whole tip 1 stay consistent and be on schedule you know that kids on a spectrum like schedules and routines and there is no harm in it because if they are consistent in their patterns and routine and we will help with those consistency in the guidance and interaction this all will help them to learn the new skills to learn the new behaviors positive behaviors uh, in an easier way and thus help them to provide the knowledge which they can apply in different situations once they are able to understand and follow those new learning skills and behaviors then as a parent we can try to break those rituals those static patterns in their life but not from the very first day when you feel that my child is becoming too stubborn or too patterned you can talk to your therapist your teachers about what strategies you can use so that there will be a balance in the consistency and being on the schedule rather than making your child too habituated or too patterned for the particular play activities academic uh, activities or any kind of daily living activities be positive and think positive why i am saying so is because usually as a parent we first of all see the incapabilities whatever incapabilities are there in our kid but i would like to request you just focus on the capabilities of your child because if you will pick out those capabilities at that particular age of your child then you can use these capabilities as their strength and thus which later on will help them to achieve their age appropriate level of skills tip 3 be patient and give it a time we as a therapist or as a caretaker as a parent we always try to use different kind of strategies technique therapies methods just to enhance the capabilities of our kid to make them independent and what next if all these techniques and strategies and therapies are not working as per your uh expectations then is it necessary that we should feel demotivated or uh, we just become depressed thinking that my child is not growing or my child is not improving just be patient there will be a time which will come definitely uh, where you will see that the child is coming out of all those signs and symptoms step by step but we need to be very patient and give the time to your therapist you to your kid to develop into a independent personality tip 4 let them do day to day activities everyday activities with you what does that mean if you involve your child in household activities maybe it's a 
kitchen activity different kind of household maybe dusting cleaning cleaning of utensils cleaning of clothes uh try to involve them while you are cooking the food that is non fire cooking various kind of household tasks we can involve our child into we can use outside activities for example we can take our kid to the grocery shopping why all these activities of uh, daily living is helpful for your child i can just take example that if you are taking your child to a grocery shop and your child wants to have any kind of snack dry snack or chip chips so what he has to do he has to use all his cross motor skills to reach to that particular height he has to use his fine motor skills to hold the packet of the chips or to choose something he has to scan use his visual perceptual skill and above all he will use his eye hand coordination cognitive skills and speech language communication skills to give that packet to the parent in the demand to have that particular snack so in the same way when we involve our kid in various household or outside world activities in the real life situation it will really help him to fight back with various signs and symptoms or challenges which your child is also facing because of autism you can take your child to the park zoo where he will be exposed to again various real life situations rather than showing the cards of animals or any kind of you know uh, slides or swings tip 5 fun filled play schedule This is again a very important necessary tip. Many times parents come to me with the with the demand of what kind of activities or home protocols uh, Priyanka ma'am we should follow at home after the uh, various kind of therapies taken by them at the therapy center. So my dear parents it is not at all necessary or even it is not beneficial to repeat or copy paste all those activities done by your therapist I can assure you one thing if you follow simple simple play schedule in the form of sand play water play or any kind of board games cognitive games which your therapist is not using during the therapy session and you convert those kind of games or fun filled activities at home as per the priority of your child i can definitely tell you that it will enhance it will uh, make the improvement speedy rather than giving the therapeutical monotonous activities in an artificial mode at home reward good behaviors with a simple theory less is more i have seen many times whenever we are giving the rewards or reinforcement to our kids whenever they are doing some positive behaviors or if they are doing any new uh, learning skills or if they are doing any new behaviors we as a parent we gives them reward but how much that praise how much that reward and at what time it should be given is very important by the parent and reward can be in the form of stickers food play toy anything which which you think is a good reinforcer for your child and i would advise you to talk about this rewarding theory uh, with your behavior therapist cognitive therapist or pediatric psychologist because they are the expert person to give you the detailed tips and strategies which will help your kid in overall development tip 7 find out the non verbal ways to connect with your kid so uh, you have to notice here what kind of tone you have to use for example if you are using the firm tone you have to habit habituate and make your child learn at home that what that kind of a tone if it is a firm tone means to you if you are using a pleasing tone or a, any kind of a request what kind of tone you are using you have to make your child learn that there are different body language for example you become just stiff with your big eyes it means that your child should know there is something alerting by mom or dad they want to uh, alert me for not doing that activity rather than using the word no or any kind of 
negative physical activity by the parents your touch is very important so if you want to stop your child for from doing any kind of activity which is not acceptable it is not necessary to verbally explain him you can use your touch your firm touch you can give pressure on the shoulder or hold the hand with a bit of pressure which will indicate or tells in a non verbal mode to your child that he has to stop there or mama or daddy is alerting him there are various kind of visual cards i have spoken earlier in my previous videos also we used various kind of visual cards which shows various kind of activities for example if your child um wants to have biscuits if your child wants to have water or if your child wants to jump but he is not able to show you those gestures so you can put the visual cards in front of him you can use the visual cards of yes no stop sad happy so that he can differentiate he can express you which later on your speech therapist or speech pathologist will help you how those can be converted into verbal mode of communication pick non verbal cues of your child various kind of sounds kids make so uh, it is not necessary to stop them every time first of all explore what are the various situations or circumstances whether he is doing or she is doing or making those sounds uh 24 into 7 whenever he is in a waking condition or there are particular reason or circumstances or situation where he is producing those sound you need to explore the gestures to convert later on with the help of the speech therapist into the verbal communication first what are those non verbal gestures your child is trying to express you for example if he is hungry maybe he will stiffen his body or he will drag your hand towards the kitchen items dry snack boxes then you have to use the visual cards and then you have to use or uh, you know transfer your kid to, uh, from the non verbal to the verbal mode of communication but if you will not explore various sounds facial expressions gestures of your child then how uh, will it be possible for you to further communicate in a verbal mode of communication teaching the child directly verbal mode of communication is not the appropriate way of learning as far as the speech and communication is concerned with the kids of autism and i think once you will talk in detail with your speech and language pathologist uh they could uh, explain you further into the detail of it pay attention to the sensory sensitivities of your child so many times uh, as a parent we face lots of tantrums and meltdowns and we relate it with some kind of uh, reasons or cause for it and we neglect sensory sensitivities here you need to talk to your expert occupational therapist and you also have to explore what are those senses or reactivities sensory reactivities which are going above the level like your child is hyperactive for those kind of sensory stimulus which we called as hypersensitivities and what are those sensitivities or sensory reactivities where your child is like those sensory stimulus are not causing anything any reaction in your child which we called as hyposensitivities hyperreactivities of your child last but not the least tip number 9 my dear parent you are a parent so be a parent and not the therapist so this is a very common myth that parents think that if we'll repeat same kind of activities uh, at home what the therapist is doing at the therapy centers or in front of them at home also will be beneficial and help in speedy improvement in the child but this is not so i can assure you i have seen results with the kids of autism with the parents that uh, whenever the parent who are giving quality time to their kids playing with them spending time in fun filled play activities in a consistent manner by rewarding them as a parent those kids are showing far far better improvement in comparison to the parents who are repeating the same kind of 
educational activities in the form of giving the boards of ABC alphabets or different kinds of fruits and vegetables. So dear friends, dear parents, my last tip always remember if you will be a good parent to be a parent and let the therapist do their work but yes you need the guidance you need the expertise from all the therapists to improve holistically and bring about the changes and development in your child as soon as possible thank you so much